So, welcome student to the next class of nonlinear optics and its application. So, in the last class, so this is uh, lecture number 11. So, in the last class, uh, we learned the overview of two important effects in nonlinear optics. One is called the chi 2 effect and another is called the chi 3 effect. We just give you a very brief outline of what are the topics are there in nonlinear optics that we are going to cover in our future classes. So, today we will uh, very briefly uh, say something about uh, the application of nonlinear optics. There are vast applications are there, but I try to make it as concise as possible. We will discuss this in our future classes. And then classical origin of nonlinearity and Miller's law that will be our goal. But this classical nonlinearity and Miller's law, it may not cover to a single class, maybe in the next class also we will do the same thing, the part 2 of that. So, let us start with the application of nonlinear optics. So, there are vast applications are there. Already we have mentioned that in nonlinear optics, different frequency components are generated. So, that is a very important aspect of nonlinear effects and subharmonics are generated we discussed in the last class that if I launch a particular wavelength, then I can get a different wavelength or frequency light when it is passing through a nonlinear medium or some nonlinear crystals. Then in optical signal processing, it is also useful parametric amplification of light. That means, we want to launch, we want to amplify some light, we launch the light and then due to some nonlinear effect what happens? Some kind of energy will be exchanged between another wave we call it pump. So, this pump wave will give some kind of energy to the signal wave and the signal wave will get amplified and all this process are nonlinear in nature and this is called the parametric optical amplification. Also optical modulations are there, optical transmission are very important where uh, very important field where optical uh, uh, nonlinearity is applied. Optical soliton is some kind of uh, stable structure which can be used in optical communication system nowadays. So, a very important concept soliton we know, but optical soliton we will going to cover in this course if our time permits. Then four way mixing that we also discussed in our last class that we can generate different kind of wavelengths by mixing two or three waves through this nonlinear process is essentially a chi 3 kind of nonlinearity. Then Raman amplification, we launch a light and in Raman active medium and we get generate uh, the strokes and anti strokes wave. So, that some sort of amplification of light is still there. So, amplification and uh, different frequency generation are the most important aspects of nonlinear optics and in different uh, applications, these few features are always used. Spectroscopy and imaging sensors, laser, pulse compression and finally, supercontinuum generation. These are the similar kind of applications that we have already mentioned, but supercontinuum generation the last one is quite important in uh, nowadays because supercontinuum generation means you are generating not a single wavelength, but a span of wavelength through nonlinear process. You launch a single wavelength light when you are getting in the output, you are getting something uh, very wide spectrum of light whose bandwidth is very, very large. So, different frequencies, discrete frequencies are you are generating through nonlinear process in second and third harmonic generation or uh, some subharmonic generation process. But at the same time, there is a possibility that you can generate continuous waves or continuous uh, uh, lights in uh, under this nonlinear process called supercontinuum generation. Well, we will discuss all this feature time to time uh, during our course. Uh, so, today we will like to since our nonlinear optics course is officially started from uh, last class. So, it is better that I should mention some reference book to the students and these books are given here. So, four books uh, I have given, but uh, your study should not be restricted to these four books. There are ample amount of nonlinear optics books are there in the market. So, whatever is preferable what whatever you like you can go with that but i find nonlinear optics by robert w boyd is very useful 
So most of the people like this book because of this uh, simple approach. Also, apart from that, that book, there are Introduction to Nonlinear Optics by Geoffrey New, Fundamental of Nonlinear Optics by P. Powers and J. W. Haas. This is a very important book, book number three. Normally, I prefer this book because the second edition is very, very nicely written and very elaborately uh, present uh, different nonlinear effects. So, I really suggest book number three for the students, but also you can uh, look introduction to nonlinear optics by J. New and you must look the R. W. Boyd by nonlinear optics. Another book is still there, nonlinear optics principle and application by C. Lee. This is also a very interesting book. If you want to read, you can read. These are the four reference books uh, you can follow during the course and all most of the uh, most of our lectures and all these things, the concepts and the topics are taken from these four books. Well, let us go to our next important topic, which is classical origin of nonlinearity. So, today we will learn in this course or in this class rather that how the nonlinearity is generated inside the system and how classically you can explain this phenomena, which is very interesting. So, first we will we will write our nonlinear polarization equation, which is this. This is our major equation that we have been using for uh, for last few classes. Thus, polarization is a function of electric field. When the electric field is very high, then the polarization can be written in terms of electric field in this fashion. So, E square, E cube, all this term will be there inside the polarization term. So, these are the higher order terms. So, when you have a very high electric field, what happened? Let us go back to our classical model, the Lorentz model. In Lorentz model, what happened? That uh, it in uh, the electrons are considered as a vibration of under harmonic oscillator by some electric field. So, if the amount of electric field is very high, what happened? The restoring force that was followed by Hooke's law will not be true anymore. So, that is why some kind of anharmonic term will be there. So, as if now the electrons are vibrating under some anharmonic oscillation. In that case, the potential, you can see the potential of the system cannot be written only half k x square. Rather, you should add another term which is this one. This is the next higher order term that you should add when our system is anharmonic in nature. So, our goal is to find out if the electric field is very high and system is anharmonic, then how the Lorentz model will be modified. So, so far the Lorentz model take care of everything by removing this term. So, now what we are doing, we just include this term in the potential and try to find out what will going to happen when this extra term is there and how the vibration of the electron will be modified. Well, under this potential, the very next thing is the force. The force is nothing but, if I write force in terms of potential, it is nothing but this. If I write a vector sign, it will be grad of u. Since this is one dimensional, just we make a derivative with respect to it, both the side with a negative sign and we will have this kind of term. This 1 by 3, so this is x cube, so this 3 1 by 3 will be absorbed and we will eventually have a m then x square. Also the first term I will have k x and this k will be replaced by m omega 0 square, where m omega 0 is nothing but omega 0 is nothing but uh, the resonance frequency of the system. Now, the important thing after uh, modifying this force term, mainly this force term is modified because of this anharmonicity. We have the total equation of motion in our hand and if you see that this is the additional term we have, the term that is depending on A is the additional term because of this quantity, this anharmonic term in the potential basically gives me the extra term in the equation of motion. 
Now, we know that in absence of this when a equal to 0 that means there is no anharmonicity in the oscillation or my model my oscillation model is harmonic in nature this term was not there. So, we already have solved this equation. So, let us go back to the, the question is what happened when this kind of terms are there. So, let us go back to the next slide well. So, this is basically the equation is written here this is our governing equation equation of motion and in order to solve what is the value of x under this additional term what we will do this is a very important step please uh, please uh, concentrate on that. We write our x as a power series solution we occasionally do that. So, in power series solution delta is a term this is a weightage factor and the first term is delta x 1 x 1 x bracket 1 gives me the first order solution and then the additional stuff is a second order uh, addition of uh, in, in order to delta square and so on. So, we make a series of x with the weightage of delta delta square and try to find out what is happening when this additional terms are there. So, we will find that when a equal to 0 we will have only our fundamental equation and when a is not equal to 0 we have we should have our next term. So, now if you put this solution next step is if you put this solution here this is my solution I will going to put this here. So, then what happened there should be some delta dependent term there should be some delta square dependent term. So, forget about the higher order term. So, now what we are doing my x is now replaced by only two first order term one is this and other is ok. Let me write once again. So, my big x is equal to delta big x 1 plus delta square big x 2. So, when I put these things here so first we need to make a x double dot when you make the x double dot nothing will happen here it will be just x double dot of 1 plus delta square x double dot of 2. In the similar way in the next term in the similar way in the third term all these things are ok only just add we will just going to add these things one is delta dependent term another will be delta square dependent term. I, I emphasize uh, that uh, this is a very important exercise. So, uh, I like to I, I like to say the student that please do these things by your own hand. This is a very simple calculation, but very important one. Okay. But the important thing lies here, what will be the x square term. So, now you can see that when I write x square, x square is nothing but delta x of 1 plus delta square x of 2 square of that. So, this x square term basically give rise to delta square then delta to the power 4 and delta cube and so on. So, if I only restrict to delta square term then I will have one term which is delta square and then x 1 x 1 square. So, this is my first term and all the term is higher of delta square. So, I am not going to take this. So, this a x square term basically gives me delta square into a x of 1 square of term. So, now the next thing is that to separate out the value of the solutions and with the weightage. So, weightage of delta will give me the first order equation which is nothing but the solution without any kind of anharmonicity. That means, the a term is not there. So, we have our old equation that we are using when our system is totally harmonic. But delta square term we find that we have the second order solution or x 2 solution, but in the source we have a new term sitting here. This is very very important. Here the source term is external electric field. 
But because of this anharmonicity what happened we have an additional source which is depending on the value of x1 and acts as a source which basically govern the rest of the part of x2. So, x2 will be governed by x1. So, this is very important that we have a source term which is in terms of x1 square and that is a governing term or the source term to find out x2 and that is coming when we take all the values that is related to delta 2. Okay. So, next what we will do let us see. So, next I try to find out the solutions. So, the solutions of related to delta equation related to delta is straightforward because we have already have this kind of solution before in lecture 9. So, in lecture 9 if you go back to your lecture 9 what you will find that the solution is simply if I place e as e 0 e to the power i minus omega t the solution will be order of x 0 e to the power i minus omega t and if we put these things then x 0 will come out and this x 0 is nothing but q divided by m and in the denominator we have this omega 0 omega square and this damping term and here there in that case the damping coefficient was written by gamma here it is written by big gamma but that does not make any difference. So, what happened that we will have a solution in the form of E q m and a factor d omega like this. d omega is nothing but this quantity that we have already explained earlier. So, that was the solution we know. So, now what we will do? What we will do? We will change the system slightly. Instead of launching one electric field, now I am launching two electric field with two different frequencies. So, now my total E here the total E is nothing but E 1 of omega 1 plus E 2 of omega 2. That means, two electric field with two different frequencies is there. So, in this figure we have shown how these two frequencies should look like. So, omega 1 is a frequency which is greater than omega 2 as per the figure suggest, but both are things are there. So, total electric field is written in this form as I already mentioned it is written in this particular form. So, this is the total electric field and this total electric field has an amplitude part A and A 1 and A 2 which corresponds to the frequency omega 1 and omega 2 and the corresponding complex conjugate. So, what happened if I launch the electric field with two different frequencies? I should have the solution in the similar way that we have done here in the previous case. So, my solution here is now not a single x, but two x's correspond to two different frequencies. So, the first omega 1 frequency I write according to my nomenclature x 1 and then some 1 here to ensure that this is the solution of x big x 1 and x 2 is 1 and this 2 is suggest that it is related to the frequency component uh, omega 2. Now, if I put this solution here again, if I put this solution here again and extract, extract the two frequencies, then separately it is possible to find out my x 1 and x 2 and this x 1 I can write in the similar form that we have already figured out here. So, we have already figured out these things that x 0 should be the form of q by m divided by d omega e 0, e 0 is the amplitude of the field. Here we have the exactly the similar form q divided by m d of omega 1, here the frequency was omega, but here the frequency is omega 1 because x 1 is related to the frequency omega 1, it should be there and also omega 1 amplitude is a 1, so I should put a 1. In a similar way I should have x 2 with the same notation just one should be replaced by 2. Okay, so, now we have two solution in our, our hand when I am launching two electric field and x 1 is represented by this. So, I have all my solution in our hand. So, x 1 x 2 is known x 1 is a component of frequency omega 1 x 2 is corresponds to the frequency component x 2 uh, omega 2. So, here it is very important that you should appreciate how the frequency components are separated out and what is the corresponding frequency component and so on. 
So, in the next slide what we do after having the knowledge of x 1 we will going to find out what should be the frequency of what should be uh, the equation for x 2, x 2 is a second order solution and the nonlinearity is appearing because of this 2, because it is a fact that uh, when there is no anharmonicity the only solution is x 1 and this x 1 we have already figured out in our last slide. So, this is my x 1 that we have already figured out where x 1 and x 2 is of the form x 1 is of the form q divided by m divided by d of omega 1 multiplied by a 1 and for x 2 it is everything same except omega 1 should be replaced by 2. So, all the solutions are there. So, what we will do? We have this value in our hand, this is the source term and now we need to find out if I put this x 1 into the system, this is the differential equation for x 2 what will happen, what will happen. So, this is the differential equation. Now, what I do that I put this here. So, this is my driving term, but inside the driving term we find that there are different frequencies are there, omega 1 is there, omega 2 is there, also the complex conjugates are there that means minus omega 1, minus omega 2 are still there. One thing you should note that when I say omega frequency component I write minus of i omega, this is just the notation. When I write E has a frequency component of omega 1, it should be E to the power of i some E 0 will be multiplied here by notation minus omega 0 omega 1 t, this is the frequency component of E omega 1. If I do the same thing and if I write what should be the component of E minus 1, then it should be the complex conjugate of that quantity. So, it will be plus of i omega 1 t, this is the notation. So, when I write this, it essentially means this is omega 1 component, this is the omega 2 component and complex conjugates are minus omega and minus 2 component, but please do not confuse with this minus sign. With this minus sign, I write this is a omega component and when I write this as a plus, this sign will be automatically minus. Okay. So, once we have the source term in our hand and you can see that there is a very important term sitting here which is square. So, that means different frequency components will be there in our source term because it is square of that. So, electric fields are now vibrating in so heavily that my potential is now become anharmonic. The harmonic part I calculate instead of launching one frequency, now I launch two frequency to make the system more general because it is a very important thing. And then we find that the second order effect that means solution in the second order solutions which is x 2 has a source term related to first order solution and this first order solution has a square term and the first order solution also have two frequency component. When it is square, then obviously there will be many frequencies are there. So, let us understand with this schematic figure. So, omega 1, omega 2 this frequency was there and what we are doing we have something in there with a square term. So, if I make a square term of this quantity, if you do that by your own hand you will find there are four term associated with that. So, you will have the solution in the next slide, but you will have different frequency components. So, omega 3 is a frequency that will going to generate because of the square term. So, there are different kind of frequencies one can generate. When you just square that you will find that omega 2 omega 1 will be there immediately. So, 2 omega term will be there, 2 omega 2 will be there, this is the second harmonic terms. Also the add omega 1 plus omega 2 will be there when you multiply this by the another term having the complex conjugate of this term we multiply then you will get these things. Also we will get this term which is a complex conjugate of the previous one, this is a difference term and also there is a possibility we will not going to get any kind of frequency term at all, this is the optical rectification term. So, here when you make a square the complex conjugate is there, so the complex conjugate multiplied by this term will absorb this exponential term 
and as a result you will have so the term will be x 1 1 p to the power of minus i omega i t multiplied there will be many terms, but this is one of the terms that you will have star of that e to the power of i omega 1 and t. When you multiply these two things you will eventually have mod of omega 1 square only this exponential i omega 1 t exponential minus i omega 1 t will cancel out and you will not going to get any kind of frequency term associated with that. Okay. So, this is important that how to find the frequencies. So, let us try to find out how to find the frequencies. <coughs> so, this is our total term, total equation, different frequency mixing will be there. It is A, B, C, D, complex conjugate of this, complex conjugate of this. So, there will be four terms as written here. This is will be the fourth term. In order to use different frequencies, what I will do that I will use the simple formula you have already used earlier. A plus B plus C plus D, it is exactly the same thing A plus B plus C plus D square of whole square of that. If you do, we have a square term, B square term, C square term, D square term and combination of term with a two factor. So, here we are doing the same thing A, B, C, D, we are making square of this term and try to find out what is the frequency which is related to 2 omega. So, if I extract the 2 omega frequency out of that, you will find that 2 omega frequency will be that frequency that will come when I make a square of these things because a square term basically gives me 2 of omega 1, any other term will not going to give these things. So, a square term is basically give me this quantity x 1 whole square e to the power of 2 omega. So, here you can see the frequency component is 2 omega here. In the similar way you have 2 omega 2 term and 2 omega 2 is nothing but the b square term. So, you will have b square here. So, I am just taking out the different frequency component there are many terms you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 there should be 10 different terms with different frequency components. So, here I am just extracting those terms. Well, Next, I will continue this process so that you are familiar with this. So, if I want to find out the other terms that what should be the frequency component of 0, then you can see that if I multiply these multi into this, then you have this term and if you multiply this with this, you will have this term. So, these both this term should not have any kind of frequencies because this plus i and minus i will going to this plus i and minus i going to absorb this minus omega 2 plus omega 2 will going to absorb you will not going to get any extra term. Also there are few other terms which is omega 1 plus omega 2 as I mentioned earlier and omega 1 minus omega 2. So, omega 1 plus omega 2 you will find simply by multiplying x 1 and x 2 and you will get omega 1 omega 2. In the similar way omega 1 minus omega 2 you will need to multiply x 1 and x 2 complex conjugate of that because you have a negative sign here. So, I can write it is omega 1 plus minus of omega 2. So, this minus sign will come because of the complex conjugate. So, you need to multiply the complex conjugate and you readily get omega 1 minus omega 2 out of that. Okay. So, I believe you understand if there are four different kind of frequency term is like that if you make a square or cube how to extract different frequency component because when you make a square of that all the frequencies are there inside the system and you need to be very careful what should be the corresponding amplitudes. Here the amplitude of omega 1 omega 2 is x 1 x 2 amplitude of omega 1 minus omega 2 is x 1 x 2 star. So, this is very important. Okay. So, in the next slide what we will do that we need to find out we just take a frequency which is the difference frequency. We just do our calculation now we will do our calculation there are several this is our mother equation I need to solve this equation and what happened 
that in order to solve that there are many frequency components are there as I written here different frequency components are there. So, I just need to choose one particular frequency and for example, just I choose omega 1 minus omega 2 which is the different frequency one can choose omega 1 plus omega 2 also. So, it depends on what frequency component you are choosing from the right hand side. So, that you can write only one term here. So, omega 1 minus omega 2 frequency will give rise to this term that already shown in the previous slide. So, now my differential equation is having a form where we have this as a driving force. There are many frequency terms are there. So, I basically try to find out the evolution equation of x 2 which is at the frequency say omega 3. So, let me do that. So, everything is at frequency omega 3. So, omega 3 is a frequency which is omega 1 minus omega 2 in our notation. So, I just extract what is the driving term and now try to find out what is the value of x 2, the dependence of x 2 of omega 3. Since this is vibrating at omega 3, the x 2 will start vibrating at omega 3 frequency. It will also vibrate other frequencies, but my driving term is vibrating at omega 3. So, x 2 will also going to vibrate at omega 3. So, this is the driving term. So, today I would like to conclude here because the next calculation again will take some time. So, today our time is restricted. So, in our next class what we will do? We will start from this equation and try to find out how the solution one can find and this solution is basically a different kind of the same kind of solution that we find in anharmonic uh, in harmonic case and how this harmonic part and anharmonic part can be correlated is important part that we will do in our next class. So, with that note, so I will like to conclude here. Thank you very much for attention. So, see you in the next class.